All right, so the first step is to find the zero. Zero is a vocabulary word, which means x-intercept. You're looking for when the y value is zero. So on this x-axis right here at two is your x-intercept. Number two. All right, so anytime you're solving equations, the first step is to distribute. So I'm going to multiply this negative two by everything in the parentheses. So negative two times four x gives me negative eight f. Negative two times a negative eight is a positive 16 equals 92. All right, our goal is to get that f by itself. So first I'm gonna get rid of a plus 16 by subtracting 16. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Those cancel, so negative 8f equals, grab my calculator, 92, 92 minus 16 equals 76. And then the final step is to divide by a negative 8. So f equals negative 9.5. On your test, you are going to have to show all of your steps for full credit. All right, on number three, if they have decimals, you are allowed to just plug it in your calculator, but we're going to do it by hand, and then we will check using our calculator. So just like above, the first step is to distribute. So we're going to get 0.8x, and then we take 0.8 times 6, which is 4.8, so plus 4.8 equals... Then I'm going to distribute this negative 0.2. So we get negative 1.6. Negative and a negative is a positive 0.4x. After I've distributed, you can't have x's on both sides. So to get rid of a 0.4x, you subtract 0.4x. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we get 0.4x plus 4.8 equals negative 1.6. And now our goal is to get this x by itself. So to get rid of a 4.8, you subtract 4.8, subtract 4.8. So 0.4x, those eliminate. Negative 1.6 minus 4.8 is negative 6.4. And then the final step is to divide. So divide by 0.4. Divide by 0.4, so x equals negative 6.4 divided by 0.4, negative 16. Now, if I was to do it in the calculator, you do the left side in y1, so 0.8 parentheses x plus 6, and the right side in y2, so negative 0 0.2 parentheses 8 minus 2x. And you go on your table, and we're going to see where y1 matches y2. So they're all negative, so let's check negative 11. Nope, we got a negative 4 and a negative 6. Negative 6, we got a 0 and a negative 4. Negative 16, yes. So on your test, make sure you show us the table where they match. So at negative 16, they both equal negative 8. So that is the correct answer. Here, again, this is an inequality, so I'm going to start by distributing. So 6x is greater than or equal to, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 15. The second step is to combine like terms. There's nothing to combine over here, but you can combine this 3 and 15. So 6x is greater than or equal to 3x plus 18. You can't have x's on both sides, so to get rid of a 3x, you subtract 3x, subtract 3x. 6x minus 3x is 3x, greater than or equal to, those eliminate, 18. And then the final step is to divide. I am dividing by a positive number, so I do not have to flip. So it's x is greater than or equal to 6. I could have been able to tell from the very beginning that this has a line underneath, so it has to be a closed circle. That is never going to change. So it couldn't be B and it couldn't be D. Now, the direction could change if I had divided by a negative. 
It didn't, so I am the numbers that are greater than 6 are going to the right. So the answer is C. On number 5, so just like before, I'm going to start off by distributing. 4 times 2 is 8 minus 4x greater than or equal to negative 7x plus 29. You can't have x's on both sides, and especially with inequalities, I like to get rid of the x's that are on the right. So to get rid of a minus 7x, I add 7x, add 7x. So 8, negative 4 plus 7 is 3x, greater than or equal to, those are gone, 29. Our goal is to get the x by itself, so to get rid of an 8, you subtract 8, subtract 8. So 3x is greater than or equal to 21. And the final step is to divide by 3. So x is greater than or equal to 7. Now, on your calculator, you can check your answer, at least the number part. So 4 parentheses, 2 minus x, and then negative 7x plus 29. So we should have them matching at 7. That is correct. And so then all you have to be able to tell is which one is greater. Okay, It doesn't tell you whether it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. But you could have at least eliminated two answer choices. Alright, 6. A pizza shop charges $7 for a cheese pizza. Plus $1.50 for each. Anytime you see that each that tells you slope, you're going to put it next to a variable. So you've got this 7 plus 1.5x. When 10 got the bill for his pizza, it was less than $16. So less than $16. What is not a possible amount of toppings? So I'm going to solve this for x. So to get the x by itself, I'm going to subtract 7, subtract 7. So 1.5x is less than 9. Divide by 1.5, divide by 1.5. So x is less than 9 divided by 1.5 is 6. And a lot of you on your test are going to rush and be like, oh, the answer is 6. But it's asking what is not a solution. Which number is not less than 6? So technically, 6 is not less than 6 either, but 7 is the answer that is correct. All right, write in slope-intercept form. So this means you're solving for y. You isolate opposite side. To get rid of a 5x, you subtract 5x. What you do to one side, you do to the other, and you write it side by side. So I'm going to bring it over here. So we've got, those eliminate, negative 3y equals negative 9 minus 5x. And then the final step is to divide. You divide each part by negative 3. So y equals negative 9 divided by negative 3 is a positive 3. Negative divided by negative is a positive 5 thirds x. So you need a positive 5 thirds x and a positive 3. Here, we're doing similar steps. We're trying to get that f by itself. So to get that f by itself, you get to get rid of a minus 24 by adding 24, adding 24. You can't combine an s and a 24, so you just get s plus 24 equals 3f. And then to get that f by itself, you need to divide by 3, divide by 3. So f equals s plus 24 divided by 3. So your answer is A. Write the equation passing through these points. So none of these are in slope-intercept form. Now we could solve each one for y and then plug them in y equals and see which one has those points. You could put those in stat and get the equation in slope-intercept form. Or you can use the test method, okay? This is an x value, this is a y value. Let's see which one makes it true. So 2 instead of x, we've got 4. Plus 6 instead of y, you've got 1. 
and it should equal 2. So 2 times 4 nope, plus 6 times 1. That equals 14, not 2. So it's not that answer choice. So 2 instead of x, we put 4. Minus 6 instead of y, we put 1. And it should equal negative 2, according to the equation. 2 times 4 minus 6 times 1. That equals a positive 2. Okay, let's come back over here. So 2 instead of x, you put 4. Minus 6 instead of y, you put 1 equals 2. 2 times 4 minus 6 times 1. Yes, that does equal positive 2. Let's check that other point just to make sure. 2 instead of x, we put negative 14. Minus 6 instead of y, we put negative 5 equals 2. 2 times negative 14 minus 6 times negative 5. And it equals 2. That is our correct answer. Okay, the same thing goes true here. We could pick out some points and test them just like we did before. So, for example, this point is at 3, 0. That's your x-intercept. This point is at 0, negative 1. That's your y-intercept. So the x value is 3 minus 3 times 0. Does that equal 3? 3 minus 3 times 0. Yes, that does equal 3. What about the other point? The x value is 0 minus 3. The y value is negative 1 equals 3. 0 minus 3, parentheses negative 1. Yes, that does equal 3. That is your answer. You could also solve each equation for y and see which one matches. This has a slope of 1 over 1, 2, 3. So the equation is y equals 1 third x. The y-intercept is at negative 1. So you could solve these for y and see which one matches. Or you can do the cover-up method. Okay, so when you cover up to find the x-intercept, you cover up the y, and what's left is x equals 3. Is my x-intercept 3? Yes. Okay, to find the y-intercept, you cover up the x, and you get negative 3y equals 3. So you divide to get that y by itself, so y equals negative 1. Is my y-intercept at negative 1? Yes. So that's my correct answer. Because we have three separate ways to be able to see which one matches. So whichever one you're most comfortable with is what you can do on your test. All right, what is the slope of this function? We can't say what the slope is because this isn't slope-intercept form or point-slope form. You have to solve for y first. So we're going to isolate the y. Opposite side, so to get rid of a 7x, you do minus 7x. What you do to one side, you do to the other, and you write it side by side. So we have negative 5y equals 25 minus 7x. And then the final step is to divide. You divide each part by negative 5. So y equals 25 divided by negative 5 is a negative 5. Negative divided by negative is a positive 7 fifths x. And then which part of that is the slope? The 7 fifths. So b is your answer. Which graph represents? So you could solve for y like we just did up here and then see which one matches. But let's practice that cover-up method again. Okay, so if I cover up the x, we're left with negative 3y equals 12. So divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. So y equals negative 4. This is my intercept, my y-intercept. Now let's cover up the y and find the x-intercept. So 6x equals 12. If I cover up that y, what's left is 6x equals 12. Divide by 6, divide by 6, so x equals 2. And that's my x-intercept. So I need a y-intercept of negative 4. No, 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 it's got to be this one. And an x-intercept of 2. Consider the line represented by the equation x equals negative 3. 
Okay, this is a typo. It should be negative 2 because that's what they're giving you in all the equations. But it's the same thing. It doesn't change the answer. All right, so I'm going to graph it because I'm a visual person. Anytime you see x equals a number, you should remember that it's vux. So this is going to be a vertical line. So I'm going to go on the x-axis to negative 3, and it is a vertical line. So this line right here, is it parallel to the x-axis? Parallel means it looks like the L's in parallel. Does this and the x-axis look parallel? No. Okay, that line is parallel to the y-axis. Are those two axes side by side? Yes. Okay. Is it perpendicular to the x-axis? Perpendicular means it crosses at a right angle. Does this line and the x-axis cross at a right angle? Yes. So guys, both B and C are true, so your answer is D. On your test, make sure you read all of your answer choices carefully. Sometimes they may offer you something that has more than one of them as a correct answer. All right. What is a slope that is perpendicular, typo, perpendicular to the line? When it's perpendicular, this is a double flip. You have to flip the sign and the fraction. Okay, so this is the slope that we're looking at. This is point slope form. We can use it just as it is. So to double flip a two-thirds, you're going to make it positive to a negative. So it's not D and it's not A. And two-thirds becomes three-halves. What is the slope of any line that is parallel? So parallel means same slope to this line. Well, I don't know what the slope is. I have to solve for Y first. So we isolate opposite side, so minus 5x, minus 5x. You write it side by side, and then divide by 7. So y equals 5, 35 divided by 7 is 5, minus 5 sevenths x. So we want to keep the slope the same. This negative 5 sevenths is the slope. So your answer is What is the equation of a line that passes through that point and has a slope of zero? Anytime you see slope of zero, you could either think of your slope band, plus, minus. You guys, you can't remember his tattoos, right? When you scratch your chin, you ask yourself why. So anytime it has a slope of zero, it's going to be y equals a number, so it can't be b and it can't be A, or slope of zero, that's a hoy. So it's Y equals, and looking at this point, what is the Y equal? Seven. Simple as that. All right, which equation has an undefined slope? So now this is a vux. Guys, if it's a vux, you know it has to be X equals a number. The only one that's x equals is c. You can also use slope man. Undefined slope, we're talking about the nose. The tattoo right there is x equals a number. It's got to be c. Which of the following equations is parallel? Parallel means same slope of the line containing those points. I know a lot of you like stat, so let's practice our stat. We haven't done that yet tonight. So stat, edit, and I'm going to type in my points. Negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, oops. negative 2, negative 4, negative 9, negative 14, negative 19, negative 24. And then to get the equation, we do stat, write, 4. So I get y equals negative 5x minus 34. And the only part is the same slope. So this part needs to be the same. And there's your answer at B. You could have done it by hand. How do I get from negative 4 to a negative 9? You subtract 5. Negative 6 to a negative 5, you add 1. 
the negative 5 goes on top, and the only equation with a slope of negative 5 is b. All right, given this equation, what is it in slope-intercept form? So they just want to solve for y again. Guys, there's going to be a lot of solving for y on your test. So isolate opposite side. To get rid of a 4x, you do minus 4x. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So we've got 3y equals 12 minus 4x. And then the final step is to divide. You divide each part by 3. So y equals 12 divided by 3 is 4 minus 4 thirds x. So the slope is a negative 4 thirds x and it's a positive 4. Given this equation, what is the y-intercept? Well, we already solved that exact equation up here, but let's use our cover-up method. If we want the y-intercept, you cover up the x. So all that's left is 3y equals 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3, so y equals 4. So the y value is 4. That's your answer. This has an x value of 4. All right, guys, so make sure that you remember Hoy Vux, you remember your slope man, and practice your definitions and your flashcards.